It's fine. All right. Let me record. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us again. This will be our final presentation on this topic for today. This is part four. So we would have completed three parts. And um, for persons who are joining us on uh, YouTube, we want to thank you for joining us. We know you have uh, other places that you could have been, but you chose to be with us. And we want to thank you for that. We want to thank you for choosing the Road Safety Unit and for joining forces with us to bring out another presentation. Um, everyone on the sound of my voice, please subscribe, subscribe to our channel. Um, once you subscribe to our channel, um, you will you will see everything that we road safety is, is going on with. Now I want to say something. Um, road safety is serious business, very serious business. So please to take it serious. My name is Kenyut here, and I'm director of the Road Safety in the Ministry of Transport and Mining. Um, I've been involved in road safety for the past 20 years. Um, it's not my doing. It has to be Elohim's doing because um, the amount of time that I try to abandon and leave road safety and find something else to go and do. But there are other things in life that I love to do, right? I always end up, um, it's like I am stuck in this area. What's going on here? Oh, I pressed the wrong button. Sorry about that, people. I'm sorry about that. There's a comment here. Yeah, okay, okay, I will. I will talk about it. I will, I will, I will. I will speak about it. I will, thank you. Right? Um, gentle people, it has been an interesting journey in road safety. I've learned a lot. And I must say that there are persons who have played a critical role in my life. One of these days, I'll do a presentation on these persons who have played a critical role in my life, in road, my road safety life. We have to pray here. Yeah, we have to pray. By now, everyone who watched Road Safety Unit present, you know that we have to pray. We, we just have to pray. Right? There's no if or but about it. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for today, this day, the ninth day of the 10th month, 2020. This is the day that you have made. We rejoice and be glad in it. We want to thank you, Almighty God, in this season of the Feast of the Tabernacles, Almighty God. Sukkot, come down upon every man, woman, and child who is watching this road safety presentation. And may they be road safety game changers, Almighty God. Bless the proceedings, bless this presentation, and may it be pleasing to you, Elohim, by fire and by force. We decree, we declare that this presentation touched the mind, the body, the soul, and the spirit of everyone across the globe in Jamaica. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Yes, that is our style. Our style is to pray all the time. We're not going to present without praying, right? And um, we hope that everybody here pray, pray, pray without ceasing. Elohim said pray without ceasing. Well, we have to watch a video. We have to watch a video. We have to watch a video.
Yes, gentle people, it's it's good to know everyone is here and everyone is watching and everyone is being empowered. Now, one I think that we must understand now is that we are in a very serious time. And um, I have been sent a very disturbing message a while ago 
on YouTube by someone who is watching now. And I must say that I spoke about it in the presentation a while ago, previous one. In, in, in Kenya, in Kenya, this is coming from Kenya. And we have Otet here from Kenya. Over 2,689 persons have been killed in traffic crashes. Why I tell you, um, we are we sympathize with Kenya. We regret those losses. And as I said to your Otet in the previous presentation, um, you you have to be a game changer. You have to play a role. You have to play a role. You try, try, right? Um, try and um, institutional building is very important. Um, so we will help you with that, right? Um, 991 pedestrians died, 223 drivers, 343, 42 passengers, 301 pillion passengers, 68 pedal cyclists, 774 motorcyclists. That's a lot of people. Reduction with respect to last year, this time is 1.3%, right? There has been decreases in the number of pedestrian killed, but there have been increases in the number of um, motorcyclists killed and also pillion passengers and also pedal cyclists. So the vulnerable road users, it, this is the same data across developing countries. The vulnerable road users are feeling the brunt of it. And, uh, and the numbers could rise because within 30 days, that number could rise further. And of course, it said so before last weekend, just between the 2nd and the 4th of October, 60 people died in Kenya. 60 people died, right? So it means that we have to, we have a lot of work to do in developing countries to stem the tide of traffic crashes. Um, we, we, our condolences go out to your country, Kenya, and also our condolences go out to Ghana. We have a Ghanaian in the in the in the in the in the in the in this um, presentation. Um, our condolences go out to Ghanaians also. Right, we are very sympathetic as it relates to this matter um, because it kills a lot of people. By now, everyone should be aware that road safety sits on three legs. Human factors, environmental factors, and the mechanical factors. And we hope that everyone will be understanding of what these three factors entails. Right? What these three factors entails. Right? Very important. And of course, you know, I have to say it. I have to say it, right? The only time... I will only stop speak about the seatbelt matter when I'm satisfied. I mean, I'm satisfied that everybody is wearing seatbelts, right? Everybody is wearing seatbelts. Um, I am not pleased with the fact that many people are still not wearing their seatbelt. I'm not pleased, right? I'm not pleased. I want to thank everyone for watching. I want to thank everyone for, for coming in, right? Um, we haven't, um, we, we never really do a live broadcast that we are doing YouTube live. We never do that, right? And um, we, the presentations will be there. So people will pick it up automatically. But nonetheless, um, we, we want persons to understand. Just wear the seatbelt, please. For persons who don't like to wear seatbelts, and we just want you to know what is waiting for you if you're involved in a crash. Face and head injuries, cervical spine injuries, steering wheel impact, pelvic fracture, and brace leg fracture. Be rest assured that that is what is waiting and lurking, right? Because who cannot hear is going to feel. Granny said, who cannot hear will feel. Granny also said, Every day the bucket got to well, one day the bottom will drop out. Mm -hmm. Nobody can say road safety will never tell you. No. We tell you. 
Now, this presentation is about investigating um, pedestrian traffic crashes. And this is the final pedestrian presentation. This is the final, right? This is the final, um, the final presentation we're going to do on pedestrian accident investigation. We think we, we would have covered all the issues to cover to the best of our abilities. Um, so, so those of you who are interested in learning how to investigate pedestrian collisions, watch, watch from um, one to four, right? One to four, right? right. Be aware of that. Now, there is ethical guidelines for investigators. We need to ensure that the truth about evidence gathered is always told. Ensure that investigators are not influenced by persons involved in accidents. Investigators must not accept bribes or gratuities to rig the outcomes of accidents. Right. Investigators must always remember that there is no gain in lying about the outcome of accidents as evidence-based truth will always win. Investigators must maintain professionalism at all times and ensure that all standards and rules are adhered to. Okay. Investigators, these are ethical guidelines. Investigators must remember that the investigation is about unearthing the truth about how the accident occurred and who caused it. It's not about proving that someone is at fault because you may, we do not represent them. Right? Evidence, evidence, evidence. Be reminded as professional society, person involved in investigation of traffic accident, we have certain expectations and we who are involved in this process are bounded on ensuring efficient quality and fair service. Do not attend scenes and loudly express favoritism or declare who you believe is at fault. Prepare all the appropriate files and allow the court to execute judgment. Ensure you investigate thoroughly. Investigate ethical guidelines. Investigate attend a scene and found that a family member or friend is involved. Investigation must be handed over to an investigator who is independent. Do not use emotion to make decisions about an accident. If you feel you may be swayed by emotion, allow another investigator to investigate it. If you are of the view, that you are not technically prepared or capable of investigating a particular type of accident, see guidance are handed over to a competent person. Let me say something about this. Let me say something about this. One of the worst thing you can ever do, you see, is to take upon yourself. So for example, you are going to invest a truck crash. And you are going to investigate a truck crash but you were never trained in that discipline. Please to avoid it. Please to avoid it. Hand over to somebody who is trained to do it here. There are some technicalities involved in investigating truck crashes. There are two truck crashes deliberately. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of time. Before everyone is aware that you were not prepared technically to do this, capable of to do it. So if you know that you are not trained and equipped to do a particular investigation, give it to the person. There are persons who specialize in trucks. There are persons who specialize in pedestrian crashes. There are persons who specialize in motorcycle crashes. There are persons who specialize in the black boxes. There are persons who specialize in the Bluetooth technology. There are persons who specialize in multi-vehicle collisions. There are persons who specialize in single vehicle collisions. Make sure that you are, you are skilled in the area of the investigation because what you don't want, you don't want to, to be found wanting, right? For me personally, if I am not skilled in a particular area, I hand it over to the skilled person. I hand it over to the skilled person, right? Do not cook up any accident as this behavior will be found out and it will cause embarrassment to you, your family, and your company. You may find yourself in jail. Present, um, well, previously, um, persons are now being trained. Pers uh, we had a set of persons who were trained at the Caribbean Maritime University to 
investigate and reconstruct collisions. Um, we are presently in dialogue with them concerning that matter, right? Um, but for the most part, training is provided in Europe and North America. Now, you know, the final presentation has to be different, a bit different from the previous one, because we want you to go home to thinking about things that are very important. Whenever there's a traffic collision, you see, and vehicles break, they will, they will leave some shadow mark on the road surface, shadow marks, and they will smear the road surface, right? They will smear the road surface. So they leave skid marks on the road surface, skid marks, skid marks, skid marks, they leave it. When a vehicle leaves skid mark on the road surface, what happens is that the wheels are locked up. Um, there is no steering friction there. You can't steer, right? So wheels are locked. We measure the, the shadow and the smear, and we get that distance. Once we know that distance, then we can start to calculate the speed, right? The smear. So, we, so as an investigator, you need to find this smear. Which part of the tire dump that skid mark, it will be there. Look at the tire, roll the tire over till you find it. Photograph it, it's part of your evidence. It's part of your evidence. Don't take it for granted. So this vehicle hit a pedestrian. Yes, we want to know where you break. So we have, to, we, have, we have to deal with you, right? We have to deal with you. We have to ensure that we have all the evidence because guess what? If this thing end up in court, you know, remember the lawyer on the other side is going to ask profound questions. Profound questions. Yes, profound questions, right? Very important for you to know that this is a situation. This is a situation, people. This is a situation, right? So you want to find that imprint, that section of the tire that put those marks on the road surface, right? Don't take it for granted, people. Don't take it for granted. You are the investigator. You are the investigator. You must know these things. So marks made on the road or any surface by a tire and a vehicle, we, we need to have these marks photographed, recorded. We have tire friction mark. These marks are made while a slipping or sliding tire rub the road or other surface. Imprint or mark on the road or surface made without sliding by a rolling tire or a person's foot. Skid marks, yes, no, look what talk about skid marks. Sliding can be due to breaking or collision damage. So what you have oftentimes is that you will see some skid mark into the crash, then you see some after the crash. Those that you see after the crash, I can tell you, for the most part, they, are, they came about because of collision damage. Those need to be measured because they, they give you a post-impact movement. There are scuff marks. This mark is made by a tire that is both rotating and slipping on a road or a surface. Skid marks are very conspicuous. Very conspicuous, right? and they are to be measured. They are to be measured. They tell a story. Skid marks tell a story. They tell stories. They tell stories. So furrows are like grass areas, right? Softness, soft material, those need to be measured. But those are going to have a different drag factor than the asphalt. It's an experience for the most part, asphalt tend to give you about 0 0.7. There are things that affects the life of skid mark, and that is why when the crash occurred, you need the investigators to move in quickly to collect these data. Weather condition, the amount of traffic, road repair or construction, these things affect skid mark. They, what you would love, what you would love as an investigator is that all tires begin to skid at the same time, but that don't harm all the time. Sometimes the rear marks start, the rear skid marks, start, rear tires 
start the length of the vehicle. Rear mark start the length of the vehicle's wheelbase behind the front ones. Mark send at the same time, rear ones, the wheelbase length behind the front ones. Marks are straight and parallel. Wheel mark, rear, rear, rear wheel marks are superimposed on front ones. Skid marks may swerve towards the lower edge of the roadway a little. People, we, uh, we don't have ideal settings here. Skid marks, however, rarely turn away and then other. They don't do gymnastics because it's energy being dissipated that, that, that tells you what's going on. Marks made by left and right tires are generally equally dark and equally wide. Front skid marks are usually more prominent than rear tire marks. Check the skid mark to ensure it line up with the width of the tire. And that when you look at the skid mark, it's in relationship to the tread. What you don't want to do, you don't want to choose the wrong skid mark. So you need to look at that. Skid marks end where the vehicle stops or where the collision begins. The outer edge of the skid marks are sometimes more prominent than the middle, but usually both edges are equally distinct. Skid marks occur when you see the wheels are locked up. We, we said that. But there are things that can delay wheel lock up, greater load and tires. Quotient, a greater quotient of friction, less rolling radius, good brake adjustment. Things that have made difference in, that can affect the length of your skid mark is temperature, weight, tire material, or tire tread design. There are different types of skid marks. So for example, a vehicle that made two set of skid marks, we call that gap skid marks that occur because pressure on the brake pedal is released and then applied, popular with pedestrian collision. So you will see these things occur in the pedestrian collisions. And that is why the black box become very important. And here we want to look now to see how far the pedestrian land. Remember we spoke about show distance. Yes, show distance coming back. So we want the point of impact and the point of rest, and we want, so we're going to measure it. So, so for example, the vehicle hit the pedestrian right here and show him right down here. We're going to measure that distance, that's going to be the true distance, and we have the formula. So we put in the formula, we calculate it. Easy, not difficult. We have unfinished skid marks. Skid marks stop short of the collision point. It's similar to gap skid mark, except that before the driver reapplies brake, the vehicle collides with some object. Bound skid or skip skid are normally skid marks that are repeatedly interrupted or narrowing. So this is due to bouncing during braking. So you have road bumps or potholes that can cause so you need to look critically at that to see if it is skip skid or bound skid. Right? This you treat them. We treat them, we measure them in one, right? Treat them as skips. This is something similar to skip skid or bounce skid. Now we have another set of marks on the road surface that we need to look out for. Because whilst you look at what the pedestrian is doing, very important for you to look at what the vehicle is doing. Vehicles operate in accordance with the laws of physics. The laws of physics are irrefutable. They are irrefutable. They are irrefutable. Right? So skid mark occur straight. They are straight. Critical speed, they are mark are curved marks. They are, they are marks that occur from a rotating tire, the tire is moving, but the tire is slide slipping, side slipping. So the vehicle tires are moving, the vehicle is moving laterally now, rather than longitudinally, right? So in skid marks, the vehicle for the most part is moving longitudinally. When a vehicle is negotiating a curve, Normally with no wheel side slipping. So, the, so it therefore mean that everything is in balance. 
Each rear tire is said to track inside the path of its corresponding front tire. Tire on the same side of the vehicle. What does that mean? Let us show you a graphical representation of that. Right. So normal driving, you see? Your rear tire track inside of the front tire. See this is the front tire? <laughs> Everybody get that? I hope so. So this is normal driving. The rear tire track inside of the front tire. This is normal driving, good driving. Driving, this is when you're driving with respect and driving with manners. Well, you don't have any behavior, you see? And you decide that you're going to be a hot-head driver, a shutter driver, and a hot foot driver. You will find the rear tire chucking outside of the front. Recipe for disaster. That vehicle will get into your, that vehicle, if not corrected, will get into what is known as critical speed. Let me tell you about critical speed. There are no corrective measure for that. You can't press a button and stop critical speed. What you're going to hope, you're going to hope that this area that you're, that you're that executing in is bush, level bush to level. So you can run off in, a, in the open. No buildings are around, no other vehicles are around. Please people, I, in 2002, you see, we were doing some tests. We we're doing some tests. And while we were doing some tests, you know, uh, one of the exercises was to dumb critical speed mark on the road. This is 2002. You know that the vehicle that we were doing it turned overturn? Yeah, man. Vehicle overturn. Vehicle overturn. Mm -hmm. So this critical speed thing is not a joke thing. Right? Vehicles get into critical speed. So gentle people, please, 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 please. Be mindful of this. And you say, some of you said that, boy, I miss here, you're hard on the driving circle. You have to be hard on them. Have to be hard on you because you see the man, you see the men that taught me road safety, they were hard on me. There was a man near Mr. Mr. Keaton Morgan. Yes, man. There was a man near Mr. Paul Clementson. Yes, man. There was a man near Mr. Mike Dresnes. Yes, man. There's another man named Professor Fred Wegman from, from Holland. Yes, man, those gentlemen don't play with me. You have to be a game changer. That's what the man him tell me. You have to do better. The man want to know. You know what, you know what, you know what I learned from my business? Him said, listen to me. Try, 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 try. Try, don't give up. And don't accept failure. Don't accept failure. The man say, if not you, then who? Tell me who next, who must do it? You have to do it. People who are here, you have to do it. In your own little sphere of influence, you have to do better. You have to do better. Ensure that people do better too. They may laugh after you know, but in the long run, they're going to smile. They're going to appreciate you. They're going to appreciate you. So these critical speed marks, right, come about because um, we have violated the speed for the tire and the road surface, right? So you find that um, there's a, after the crossover, when the rear tire starts tracking outside the part of the front tire, if the mark is a true yard, it will get wider and wider the longer it gets. Normal, I have seen a lot of fatalities where vehicle you are, lots of it. I saw one at Duncan's Trelawney, right at Duncan, right at a little corner. When you're coming down, you're going to a little corner. You, the straight road go into Duncan's town and you have a corner. I see people get into your right there. People dead, three people dead. These yard marks leave like fishbone marks on the road surface looking like this. This is what it looked like. This is what it looked like. Yeah, this this show this much better, much better, right? This is it. Now we have what is known as a vehicle damage scale. So when we have these pedestrian crashes, we're going to put it in a, on a scale. So you need to learn these things. I don't know if you're 
instructor taught you these things are, are those involved in collision investigation are aware. But this is the clock, the car of a clock, right? Just like how the clock operate, yeah? To the right of the clock is one, two, three, four, five, six o'clock. The back of the car is six o'clock. And with you know, clock. The, the front get licked, that's 13, 14. So once these numbers are represented, we know what they mean, all right? So be aware of them. Under, under the, under the, underneath the car is number 16, all right? So just remember that. Um, there are checklists here that we can mark off a vehicle that are involved in crashes. So you want to know if when the vehicle hit the pedestrian, the airbag fly. Was the airbag deployed? Check that out, right? Were there children in the motor vehicle? We need to know. Or were they transported? We need to know. We need to know. A, a matter that I want to speak about, you see? Normally when traffic crashes occur and sometimes the pedestrian is, so, oh, not in all cases, but sometimes based on the ferocity of the traffic crash, um, with the impact with the pedestrian, the, the earbuds deploy. Um, during the people, this are very, earbuds are very expensive to, to be placed back in the vehicle. It costs about 200 to 500,000 Jamaican dollars to put them in, but it's about 2,000 to 4,000 US United States dollars, right? So, you know, that's why I don't know how people drive bad pan road and do all these foolishness on the road. Because the earbag class is very expensive. Right? Why not let us just take our time on the road, be careful, be respectful to each other. Your brother's keeper, not be selfish. The quality of driving that I'm seeing on the road network is pathetic. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's not good. So the airbag will deploy. Now, gentle people, remember I told you that vehicles with airbags, they are smart vehicles. They have black boxes inside of them. And that black box now, we can collect a lot and we can extract a lot of data from it. And we use that data for analysis. So, so in this crash with the pedestrian, we're going to use the, the black box. Yeah, man, we're going to find what this driver was doing. Of course, we're going to find what the pedestrian was doing too. So as I tell you before, vehicles are black box and we use our black box, right? Vehicles are black box, right? Now, there's a matter, there's a global matter and I have to speak about it because um, there are persons who are involved in traffic collisions and these defective earbag inflators fly. Oh, by the way, this is what the black box look like. It's not black. This is what the black box look like. I hope that Everyone can see it. This is what it looked like, right? This is what the black box looked like, right? Know it, it's your friend, right? Let me turn the, turn the other side around so that you get it, right? So this is what it looked like, right? This is the black box. They are in motor vehicles equipped with earbags. Right? They are in motor vehicles equipped with earbags, right? The earbag, earbag control and the seatbelt control are placed right here. They are in the vehicle. Right? It is, it is this thing that sends off the signal to you to wear your seatbelt. Yes, this earbag, black box, uh, black box, not black, it's silver. I just want you to know that, right? The other thing, the earbag inflators now. We have two earbag inflators. I'll soon show you them. I'll soon show you the two earbag inflators that we have. Um, I'll soon show you them. What is the purpose of these earbag inflators? They are to ensure that the earbag, the bag deploys, not the shop nails deploy, right? I have two earbag inflators. I'll soon show you them. One is for the front and one is for the passenger, right? Give me a second, let me get them, right? And show you. Yeah, let me show you what they look like. Cause you need to know. You need to know these things, people. Earbag inflator. This is the one that is in the driver's steering wheel, this one, right? This is how it look. This is how it look, people. This is how it look, right? Everybody see it? Now, this one now is for passengers. This one is in the passenger side. They are very heavy. If you look, there are some holes there, right? They serve a very good purpose, people, right? 
Now, what happened is that they, you need to go, you see, everybody need to go and check with their dealer if they are operate, if they are, if they are driving around with a deadly Takata airbag inflator. Because you could be involved in this pedestrian crash and the airbag inflator fly, right? With the shrapnels fly and the bag fly. And it, 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 these shrapnels are so dangerous that they can do serious things. They can burn you. They can cut your throat, bust your face, bust your teeth, bust your, cut off your tongue, um, dig out your eye. Um, once your entire face that cause it, you'll have to go learn to speak again and do a lot of plastic surgery. Um, they can also fly through your nose hole and clap your brain. And that is very serious. Gentle people, to be forewarned is to be forearmed, right? This is the damage that the deadly earbag inflator can cause, right? Be mindful of that. Just be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. People have been killed across the globe. People have been killed. People have. I don't want to look away now. This is it. Listen to the echo. The focus is obliterated on impact. Only the rear end escapes total destruction. And the passengers... Don't ask. God, the hairs on the back of my neck are sharp as nails. The car decelerates from 120 miles an hour to zero in 68 milliseconds, with its occupants experiencing peaks of 400 G. The front end hits the wall with such force that the back end rises up 90 degrees and the car is slam dunked down onto its nose. Crash test expert Tony Payne talked me through the scale of this wreckage. Absolutely mauled. Yes, you've got the vehicle crushed nearly all the way back to the B pillar. You can see here, for an occupant in there, oh absolutely my. no survival space at all. My there's the rear seat, and there's the steering wheel there, and literally it's been compressed between the front and rear seat down to that distance. Goodness me. It's, it's almost turned into a piece of modern art. And if we go right round into the car itself, Front seat's right seats, in there, uh, that's the instrumentation panel, and the person's literally in that area there. I mean, I know it's it's all, it's all not real, but no, it's still no. mighty haunting. It is an extreme scenario, but modern family hatchbacks can reach the speeds we saw today. Maybe it'll make you think twice the next time you want to put your foot down. Yes, people, yes, 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 we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving, we're moving. Right? One I think we must do, we must check. When investigating these collisions, these pedestrian collisions, we need to check if the cargo area, check the cargo area of the vehicle. It was full, partially full, nearly empty. And we check what was in it. <laughs> check if it's a rum buckle, check if it's a rear beer buckle. Yeah, man. Check if you see dragon buckle. Check if you see alcoholic beverages. Yes, man. It gives a story. Tells a story. I've seen a lot of things. A lot of things. I tell you, you know, the reason why I tell you these things, because I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things. See these things. Right? These things are serious things. I want to see. I want. Um, because... Yes, an intelligent a while ago. Some person never fully understand. They never really get the dynamics of the pedestrian. So I'm going to go through it very slowly this time. Right. So we need there are various dynamics that pedestrians will go through when collisions occur. So I want you to 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 I want everybody to surgically follow me. Yeah, man, follow me. Follow me with that, right? Um thank you for your messages and um and um, YouTube, um, road safety unit, road safety unit, 
But the same thing, we'll ensure that the message is delivered. We will ensure that. We, we're not going back off. Right? Um, we, we, have, we have more presentations to do. Right? We're coming to pedestrian safety pedest presentation. Let us deal with pedestrian safety. We want people to understand what you need to do when you're investigating pedestrian collisions. There are different trajectories that happen when pedestrians are involved in collisions. And these are the wrap, forward projection. So they will push, they will wrap on the vehicle. Um, they will be pushed forward. They will be fender vaults. There will be roof vaults. There will be some assaulting. There will be dragging. There will be partial or restricted fender vault. This is what the wrap trajectory looks like. So the pedestrian will wrap on the vehicle, knocked out from under his feet, end up on the bonnet, come up on the bonnet nicely, then will be thrown off. Right? Every pedestrian, that's why pedestrian, look here, if you know any pedestrian, send them these presentation. If you know a pedestrian, I am telling you to, I am asking you to send this presentation to every pedestrian that you know. Maybe if pedestrians are aware of these things, they will think twice about the action that they do out there. I am not surprised that so many pedestrians die across the globe. I'm not surprised because I've seen the behavior of pedestrians in many countries. We have what is known as forward projection. Pedestrian is struck with a force that is above the center of gravity. Pedestrian's upper torso is accelerated in the direction of the vehicle impact, thus projecting the body ahead of the vehicle. The body falls on the road surface and slides to the point of rest. Injuries are normally on the opposite side of the body. This is evident in children hit by passenger cars. Evident in pedestrian hit by pontoon shaped vehicles. Previous presentation, we talked about pontoon shaped vehicle and V-shaped vehicle. Watch the other presentations. Pedestrians will roll, tumble, or slide to point of rest. <laughs> Forward trajectory, people. Forward, as a pedestrian, why are you behaving badly on the road network? Have you ever seen a doctor operating on a bus or a truck? Put in the chat room if you ever see a, a doctor operating on a bus and a truck and a hospital bed or in a theater. Only mechanics alone I know operate on vehicles. Fender vault. <laughs> Trust me. This occurs a lot with V-shaped vehicles where the vehicle could be braking or non-braking. Point of rest is either behind or to the side of a striking vehicle. Pedestrians will land on the side of the vehicle they were struck by. If struck, if struck by the left, they will land on the left side. On the right, they land on the right side. Gentle people. Sometimes the pedestrian normally make connection with the windscreen are the A pillar. I have told you in previous presentations that if your head hit that A pillar, you know, it can be calamitous, right? It can be calamitous. We have the next one known as roof vault. So fender vault, the fender. Everybody know where the fender of the vehicle is. Um, I don't think anybody don't know what the fender of the vehicle look like. Roof vault are mostly V-shaped vehicles. Roof vault, pedestrians are run over by other vehicles. Speed above 60 kilometers per hour, but not below 32 kilometers per hour. This is where the pedestrian center of gravity is higher than the leading edge of the striking vehicle. So the pedestrian is lifted into the air. <laughs> Why I tell you, roof vault. People, this is serious. People, please, you all must respect road safety. You all must strive for road safety. 60 people die in Kenya in three days. 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's sad. Otet, you have to you have to push harder in Kenya. You have to push harder. Tony, you have to push harder in Ghana. Mm -hmm. You all who are here watching these presentations need to push harder for road safety, not only in Jamaica, but across the world. This presentation is reaching the hand of people who live in North America and Europe too. So please, people, play your part, play your part, play your part. Some assault, the extension of the RAP projection, but with a higher impact speed or impact that it, with lower portion of the pedestrian body. Lower part of the pedestrian body is contacted and vehicle impact speeds impart enough energy to the pedestrian's body to cause them to flip in the air before contacting the road. Injuries are normally not on the same side of the body and the average speed is, uh, is approximately 60 kilometers per hour. People, you see that speeding, um, depending on what you're looking at, um, speeding, if, if it's a 50 kilometer speed limit for that area, it's in a pedestrian at 60 kilometers per hour, it's reckless, reckless, reckless. Oh, your boy, I tell you, I tell you. Not easy. Sometimes these pedestrian collisions occur with corner impacts. It can be side swipes. And normally pedestrians come out on the, on the negative side of it. Negative side. There's this roof vault, the pedestrian slides all the way up or passes over the windscreen and over the roof. Pedestrian may contact the trunk. Oh my God. If a pedestrian is hit from the front and there is enough energy dissipated to cause the pedestrian to make contact with the trunk, that is very serious. I have never seen any pedestrian surviving that. That's all I can say. I don't know if they can survive. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, those who have hit the chunk died in my experience. If anyone knows of another situation, you can tell me. Mm -hmm. Traumatic injuries will be unleashed on the pedestrian. Driver never break. Therefore, the vehicle must be traveling very fast, either accelerating after impact or traveling at a high rate of speed. People, this is serious. Jagging, this is pedestrians after being hit end up being thrown under the vehicles. So you'll see extensive tissue loss. No speed can be collect, calculated from pedestrian formulas available. <laughs> We need to calculate the vehicle speed and pedestrian speed. One thing we also need to do, we need to find, put the pedestrian in time, um, put the pedestrian in time and the vehicle in time. And then check if the vehicle, if the vehicle was traveling at the official speed limit, if the crash could have been avoided. All of these things, we have to calculate these things. So when persons are submitting these reports, very important that you ask these critical questions and demand that it has been done. No slapdash traffic accident investigation. Must be done properly. You demand a time distance analysis. It will tell a story. What was the maneuver of the pedestrian? We need to know that. Pedestrian shoe normally leaves shoe mark on the road surface. We need to find those shoe scuff marks. Those marks fade away quickly, so we need to ensure that we are on the scene very quickly. Look out for skid mark offsets. 
Sometimes calculating pedestrian speed can be very difficult, especially if the pedestrian is under the influence of alcohol, walking with a cane, or holding a child, pushing a stroller, carrying a baby, on the influence of cell phone, text messaging, are impacted by, by more than one vehicle. I've seen pedestrian, I've seen a pedestrian crash, you see? Person was impacted by two vehicles. The person died though. We were able, one of the vehicles, we were able to get the black box and get a lot of information from that vehicle and prove a lot of things. People? Did the vehicle slide to stop? These are questions investigators must ask. Did the vehicle slide to stop? Did the vehicle move? Did the body move? Did the objects move? What are the pedestrian equations? We need to do a time distance analysis to see where the pedestrian was in time. And of course, we know the walking speed of pedestrians. Um, there are a lot of studies that have been done concerning that matter. This is Friday. Music, very important.
well, 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 well. Um, oh, there's a question here. Right, okay, good, 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 good. All right, um, I just want to thank everyone for coming. I just use the opportunity to open the floor to a few questions, if anyone have any questions. If there are any questions, please, to, you are free to ask questions now, if you have any questions. I'll just open the floor for a little time, and then if you have questions, you ask, and then I will, I will close off. Anyone has question? Going once. Anyone want to say anything? Going once, going twice, going thrice. Okay. All right, let me just see the chat, check the chat. Okay, the chat is clear. All right. I just want to tell everyone, thank you very much for watching our presentation. I do hope that um, you would have learned something and that you will be able to impart it to your respective countries and portfolios. And to play your part for road safety. You don't, ha you don't have to work with the government, private sector, public sector, or any sector. You live in a country. Just talk to your citizens about road safety. Play your part. Transmit information. And uh, everything will work itself out. I wish everyone a safe weekend, prosperous weekend. And may God cover you, cover you and your family with the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And um, we'll see you next week. Next week. We're going to come with some more stuff next week. So once again, thank you all. Hold on. Thank you all. Yes, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for the for joining us. We'll see you next week.